Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here, and this is a video that's probably going to fly under the radar a little bit. It's not the sort of thing that's going to generate a ton of views, but I wanted to make it anyway because I just finished watching all of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and really that's sort of the capstone for me of making it through all of the sort of 90s era Star Trek fare that was available on television. So. I wanted to talk about just how much I really enjoyed all of these series. And so we're talking about The Next Generation, we're talking about Voyager, and we're talking about, again, Deep Space Nine. Now, this does not include the movies that were parallel to those. I've seen most of those, if not all of them at this point. But I want to talk about the TV shows and just why I miss that kind of television. And I had a really good time making it through all of these on Netflix. So if you're a Star Trek fan, you know, you understand what I'm talking about. But if you've never seen any of these, I would highly recommend checking them out or at least giving them a shot to see if it's kind of your flavor of TV. Hey, as always, if you're enjoying the videos, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Please be sure to subscribe. And as always, I really appreciate everyone's viewership. We just hit 350 subscribers, which I think is awesome. Again, I'm not really making these videos to try and become some YouTube mogul or whatever it may be, a personality, I guess, on YouTube. But it's just sort of a fun outlet and hobby to sort of get into, but I do appreciate the viewership. Uh, and as always, thanks for sticking with me. So the first of the 90 Star Trek shows that I watched was The Next Generation. And I'll just say up front that I think that it is the best of that era of shows. I love Patrick Stewart as Picard. Uh, Jonathan Frakes as Riker and the rest of the cast and crew that are involved with that do an excellent job. It's a little bit rocky at the start and a little bit cheesy, but that's Star Trek, right? It's not meant to be something this super hard, serious, realistic, I guess would be the word, science fiction, even though, it, of, of course, it does lean into realism a lot more than something like Star Wars, perhaps. But uh, it is a little bit cheesy, but as it progresses and goes on, you really start to see just how great the sort of moral and philosophical and ethical foundations that really uh, sort of underpin each of the episodes, or most of the episodes anyway, really are. And there's really some brilliant science fiction going on there. And I think that The Next Generation, for me, has a special place because when my first son was born, and so this would have been 2010, so he's you know almost 11 now, uh, getting through those long sleepless nights with an infant was made so much easier by having Star Trek by my side. I would hear him crying in the other room, I would get up to make a bottle, to let my wife sleep, of course, and I would pop on another episode of The Next Generation while he slept in my arms, and the next thing you know you're rolling, it's 3 or 4 a.m., you've made it through 5 or 6 episodes or whatever it was, but I've just got really fond memories of TNG. I did not watch it on its original run. And honestly, I wasn't a major Star Trek fan when I was younger, it, it, I guess except for really sort of the older movies, the Shatner era, Kirk era, Spock era movies that were out. I did like those movies, but I didn't really give The Next Generation a fair shake because I remember watching it when I was younger, when it was a new thing, and it just felt a little bit stale and too cheesy for my taste at the time. But looking at it as an adult, I've really come to appreciate everything that it's about and what it does so well. Now, the second series that I dug into when it comes to 90s era Trek was Voyager. And again, I really liked it a lot. Um, again, there are some really bad episodes <laughs> in Voyager. I mean, there are times where it feels like it's really sort of feeling around and stumbling a little bit to get its footing. But again, I think what makes it work so well is that it's a great cast. And I love the general premise there where this ship accidentally gets flung, you know, halfway across the galaxy and is trying to get back to Earth. And that's really the, the overarching story of the show. But one thing that I like about all of these uh, era of Star Trek shows is that in a lot of cases, each of the episodes is sort of a self-contained thing. So there is sort of a, a bigger story arc that drives you know the whole series forward, whether it's TNG or Voyager or Deep Space Nine. But each one of these is sort of a self-contained thing. And I just recently started watching Discovery. And while I do enjoy it and like a lot of things about it, I, I hate that it seems like a lot of modern shows really are just focused on sort of that main narrative and pushing that forward with a lot of drama in every episode and not stopping to kind of play around a little bit and have fun. So I kind of miss that era of TV, and I think that's one thing that I appreciate about these shows in particular. But again, Voyager is really well done. Uh, Tuvok ended up being one of my favorite characters in Trek overall. Uh, and then you've got Ensign Kim. I believe it's Ensign Kim. I could have the rank wrong there. But Kim and Paris... Uh, who were friends, and I think it just works really well. Had a lot of fun with it. I do think that Voyager had a really kind of unsatisfying and disappointing finale. I think that could have been handled a little bit better, but again, I did have a lot of fun with it. 
And as I mentioned at the start of the video, I just finished watching Deep Space Nine, and it comes in in second place as my second favorite Trek offering as a series after The Next Generation. Really great cast, really great stories. I think the whole Dominion War arc is just awesome in it. Um, I kind of had mixed feelings about the whole, you know, prophets versus pod race emissary dynamic, even though, of course, that's a crucial part, even from the first episode of Deep Space Nine of the show. But I've seen some people comment on it really pushing Trek into fantasy more than science fiction, even though I guess you could argue that, you know, the prophets are aliens. And so maybe the pod race are too in that same vein. It's never really made entirely clear. But Again, great show, uh, and really, honestly, you know, toward the end of that series, when you see Miles O'Brien, who was in The Next Generation, who was also in Deep Space Nine as a more major character, uh, and Dr. Julian Bashir, you see their friendship uh, sort of evolve, and then on that final episode where O'Brien decides to take a professorship in the Starfleet Academy back on Earth and leaves the station, that hit me a little bit more in the feels than I thought it would. And I don't know really why that is, but you become so invested in these characters and really appreciate who they are that you just sort of, you know, you care about what they're doing. And I think that's the sign of really good writing and what makes the show so great. Odo is a great character. Kieran Reese. I mean, everybody in the show works well. And I remember early on in the show thinking, man, I really cannot stand Nog. You know, he was one of those characters that I think was intentionally written to be annoying and kind of a pest and a pain. But as that goes on, he became one of my favorite characters in the show. I tended not to, in general, enjoy the Ferenginar or Ferengi episodes that much. I just found it a little bit too grating at times, how they talked and behaved. You know, and that's beyond Nam and Kork, the other Ferengi characters. But uh, again, for the most part, and really overall, Deep Space Nine is outstanding and I really appreciate it. So again, really this episode of Flowers Flicks today is focused on Star Trek because I've come to really appreciate it and enjoy it. As someone who's been a lifelong Star Wars devotee, I didn't really give it, again, a fair chance until adulthood, and I'm so glad that I did because it's such a great series. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. I mean, the nice thing is that all these are on Netflix, at least for the time being, and so you can check out these series, these older series, and I say older, relatively speaking, we're talking 90s era stuff, but... You can check it out and see what you think, but I really do kind of miss that that era and that sort of period of shows where each episode did something a little bit different, right? And some were a little bit more fun, some were a little more serious, some were a little bit more metaphysical perhaps, but they all worked. Anyway, let me know what you think about Star Trek and especially 90s Star Trek. Comment below, leave me your thoughts, and as always, thanks for watching.